I'm going to talk about our changing conception of the bastardized notion of what we mean and what we think we mean when we say the word authenticity. Hello. Hello. <laughs> my name's Sam Knights. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I like to spend a lot of my time in charity shops, which you might be able to tell from my kind and charitable demeanor. The other day I was in a vintage shop, which if you don't know is exactly like a charity shop. It's just instead of going to starving Africans, the money goes to middle-aged hipsters who use it to buy jam jars. And inside, everything is old. Hello and welcome to the vintage shop where everything is old and rotten and dying like me. Dust, mold, asbestos. We sell it all here. Here in the vintage shop with our cobwebs and our mildew and our photographs of cobwebs. Tell me, what vintage item can I interest you in today? I'm just looking for a shirt. A lance. <laughs> Uh, a, n n no, a, a shirt. Some pantaloons? No, a shirt. A trebuchet, maybe? No, a shirt. Oh, how about a top hat? Or a penny farthing? Or this old man I have been rearing since birth and feeding on a diet of nothing but dead pheasants and live pheasants. He's a freak, a freak, a freakish man with the top half of a centaur and the bottom half of a minotaur. <laughs> so he's just a normal man then? Yeah, yeah, he takes human form, yeah. Oh, how about this very speciality vintage item? Oh my fucking God, he's pulled out a knife, yes. It is a knife, but this is also what they used in the olden days for their Snapchat face swap. Just get a friend, <laughs> hack off their face, slap it on yours, and the results are hilarious. So vintage. I mean, the man was clearly deranged, but what upset me more was that the shop was absolutely jam-packed full of posh teenagers wearing vintage Adidas, appropriating the clothes of the working class and describing it as authentic. Oh my God, William, this is so authentic. I've become really obsessed with the word authenticity recently because I'm hearing it a lot. And in this world of political spin and fake news, I think truth is an inherently slippery concept. And too often we fill it with a concept we don't quite understand but use as a substitute substitute authenticity. Now, I don't know about you, but people often come up to me and they say, Sam, they say, Sam, they say, Sam, what is your favorite brand of dictionary? And I say, oh, that's hard. Um, oh, uh, well, listen, I'll tell you what it's not. I'll tell you what it's not. Not Collins pocket size dictionary. Yeah, that's right. Someone's prepared to speak the truth in here. It's not Colin's pocket-sized dictionary. That's right, Colin. Your dictionary's shit. <laughs> your dictionary's shit, Colin, because, Colin, your pocket-sized dictionary, Colin, is not a pocket-sized dictionary the size of a pocket. <laughs> At best, it is a pocket-sized dictionary the size of a large brick. And that is not what a pocket-sized dictionary should be, Colin. Just from a cursory glance of your front page, I can tell you have mystified two words already. Pocket and sized. <laughs> Which rather calls into your question the understanding of the word dictionary. And that's a shame, Colin, because I love dictionaries. I love all kind of reference books. Dictionaries, yeah. Encyclopedias, yeah. Thesauruses, affirmative. <laughs> Uh, no, I guess the real reason, uh, the real problem I have with Colin's pocket-sized dictionary is that in order to reduce everything down, he had to reduce complex concepts. So authenticity becomes synonymous with truth, and I don't think that's right. I don't think that's how we use the word authenticity in real life. Oh, you can't say anything anymore. You can't talk about immigration without people calling you a racist. You can't talk about wanting to punch gay men in the face without being called a homophobe. You can't talk about having dead bodies in the freezer without people calling the police. 
I just want a world where you can say what's going on in your head, where you can call a spade a spade and a woman a spade. <laughs> That's what I want. I want an authentic world. And I'm not saying any side has a monopoly over truth, but we're all guilty of peddling myths. Lawyers, politicians, cyclists reading the Odyssey. And too often, we allow the inauthentic to become the new authentic. These people that we hold up as bastions of authenticity, Donald Trump, Nigel Farage, Boris Johnson, are only allowed to be authentic because they are the posh, white, awful men that are already running the world. And if we allow authenticity to be put on a pedestal, then we are are choosing them and we are fucking everything up and we're already far too fundamentally fucked <laughs> and do you know what I blame milk <laughs> for years we have judged authenticity on the price of a pint of milk what's the price of a pint of milk that's the question we asked amazing how many got it wrong David Cameron George Osborne James Pace for those of you who don't know who James Pace is, he was the agriculture minister, the man in charge of all the milk. <laughs> he could literally have said anything. Uh, James Pace, what is the price of a pint of milk? Ah, da, da, t -t 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 20 thousand rupees and one pence. Is it? It is now because I'm James Pace. Ooh. <laughs> We had to ask about other authentic foodstuffs, uh, like uh, what is beer, why are chips, uh, what is the price of a loaf of bread? David Cameron was asked, what is the price of a loaf of bread? And he said, he's very cunning, David Cameron, he said, I don't know, because I only eat bread I've made myself. As if anyone was going to believe him. Like he'd been scheduling meetings around the baking of ciabatta. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what authenticity means anymore. And I don't know why we're holding it up as such an important thing. Um, but I do know what to say. If anyone asks me what is the price of a pint of milk, I'm going to look them in the eye. I'm going to lick my lips and I'm going to say, I don't know, because I only drink milk. I've made myself. <laughs> As I was leaving the vintage shop, I saw this, and it amazed me, a pocket-sized dictionary the size of a pocket. I quickly flicked through to my favorite chapter, chapter A. Ooh, what a good one. <laughs> ah is the first word. And I read this, authenticity, noun, the truth that we construct for ourselves. And I thought, that'll do for now. All right, thanks, I've been Sam.